Chrissy over here, uh, the head trainer for Reflectasil. Uh, what we want to do today is do a little bit, a little uh, uh, video to showcase our blonde paste, our blonde paste, because a lot of people do not know about this uh, extra service of bleaching the brows, and it's a safer method as to what hairdressers would be using, um, because you shouldn't be using hair dye to bleach or to color the brows. You should be using something that's safer with the right amount of peroxide. And that's what we want to showcase today. We want to uh, give you a little bit of a taste of uh, one reason why you would use the blonde brow. So with me, I have my beautiful model, Arvella. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and what we want to do today is as she's going processing, she's going into steps to lighten her hair a little bit blonder. She wants to get that little better, crisper blonde and her brows will start to be having a contrast. Uh, they'll look too harsh or maybe too dark that her face might be washed out a little bit. So in order for her to keep that warm color that she has in her face, what we're going to do is lighten her brows a little bit uh, to five minutes only. So I'll give you a little brief uh, just description, I guess you can say, on how many levels you can lift your brows. Only three levels. Unlike salons, they can lift up to nine levels because they're using higher peroxide. We're only using 3% 10 volume and you can only lift three levels, three shades. So your shade number one or your level number one is five minutes, which I want to do for Arvella because her brows are not too, too black, not too, too light. So we want to get into that in-between look and five minutes is just enough to lift that color. Second level is 12 minutes and it's to lift, sorry, the second level or a second shade. And then 20 minutes is your third level. Never go past 20 minutes because your oxidant is still working with your bleaching paste and it never stops. It's progressive and it will continue working on their brows and it will, can potentially damage or cause a reaction on their skin. Okay, so with our Bella, we're going to do the prep work. I'm going to show you to clean, to prepare, and then to deposit the, the blonde paste. Okay, so what we're going to do first is grab our saline solution. Okay, our saline solution is, you know, restores your, your pH balance. And we also want to have a clean, clean canvas when we're bleaching because we don't want anything to be in there to interfere with it or else we might get that zebra effect where some color, some hairs have grass that bleach the blonde paste, some hairs have not. And then when you deposit a color, with our relative, we're not going to deposit a color because our aim is for her just to bleach it out for five minutes and then she can just walk out of the salon and it, and her, it looks very subtle with her hair, okay? So uh, we'll do the first step of cleaning her brow area. And even if they don't have any makeup on, I always do suggest to still clean that area. Uh, environmental flat factors, there could be particles from outside, dust, uh, what's it called again, soil. Uh, also, they could be sweating a lot. So you want to get all that residue off and have a clean canvas. So we're going to do our first step. And I'm going to wipe her brows. We're going to clean the other side of her brows with the saline solution. As I mentioned, even if they didn't have any makeup, please go ahead and do this step. Okay, so we got that. And now what you can do is use your uh, non-oily eye makeup remover, which is lash and brow strengthening. It strengthens the hair, so might as well use it and give them a good aftercare or a care during the process. Okay, so we're going to put some on the cotton pad. Okay, and then we're going to wipe her brow area, going a little bit the opposite direction as well as we want to get in those hair because when you apply the bleaching paste, you're going to be going against the hair as well, okay? So we don't want nothing in there. Same with the other brow, okay, perfect. So she, her prep work is done now and now we can move to uh, mixing our blonde paste. So let's clean up the area here for a second and I will show you. Here's our blonde paste that we're going to be using. You still use the same ratios as in you're using your two centimeters of your blonde paste, but you're only using your cream oxidant when it comes to using the bleaching paste, okay? Uh, and you're using about 23 to 25 drops. Sometimes you might have to go 25 to 30 depending if the texture is still pretty, pretty thick. But usually 23 to 25 drops is perfect to two centimeters of the blonde paste. Only cream oxidant with the blonde paste, okay? So let us put our two centimeters. Okay, 
Now, I'm not quite sure how it will show on the camera, but that is your two centimeters. Perfect, okay. And now I'm gonna take my cream oxidant. There's your cream oxidant. Hopefully it looks perfect, there we go. And I'm going to mix my 23 to 25 drops. So I'm gonna stop at 25. Okay, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. So we got my twenty-five drops. Now when you're mixing the blonde paste, at the beginning it's very, very, very clumpy. That is okay, nothing's wrong with the product. It's not damaged. It's just even when you do your your hair, the blonde when the hairdresser is dyeing your hair, the bleach that they're mixing with the oxidant is very very lumpy at first, and then you work at it until you get a grainy paste. As soon as this is a grainy paste, you're perfect. You know you've got the proper consistency. So I'm gonna start working at this, and you can see how it's like clumpy. Perfect. And now I'm going to work at it. Now, if you feel after a minute that you've worked at it, it's still pretty clumpy. That could be that you didn't use the appropriate amount of the bleaching paste, which was uh, two centimeters, or um, you used way too many more drops of your uh, oxidant cream. Okay, so I you can hear the grains like as you're mixing it, and then you can get this nice grainy paste. Perfect, okay. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit more for 30 seconds. Perfect. And now I'm gonna start applying it onto her brows and also making sure that you're going against the hair growth as well. You wanna cover every single hair. They will look like white caterpillars, I tell people, so that you know you've covered all the hairs, okay? So we're gonna start applying it. And as I start reaching over here, you know, I start working against it as well. And saturating it, saturating it, and you can always, you know, avoid too much on the skin. You can always clean it like that. Once again, because it's safe for the face area, it's not going to cause reactions to your customer, to your client. I sometimes work with the side of my brush as well to be able to put more of the paste on there. And once again, moving, working against the hair as well. Okay, so as I'm applying that, now as we mentioned, level number one, which we just wanted to lift only one sh shade of her brows, is only five minutes. You can do a test within that five minutes and check her brows to see how far along they've processed within a one minute, just so you know that it's okay and that maybe five minutes might not be long enough. Maybe you might have to leave it longer, okay? So I'm going to finish applying this side, making sure that it's all covered. As you can see, I'm trying to cover every single part of her hair. So you get a more, you get a more even process done, okay? And that helps too when depositing the color as well. Some parts are not darker or lighter or color is more vibrant and not vibrant. It's all uniform. Perfect. So that looks just about good. And now we can move to the other brow. Same thing. And working against the hairs as well. Putting it on in such a fat, uh, um, thick method so that it covers all the hairs. Some hairs might be a little bit more bristly, so they might be sticking out. So this method of doing your brush sideways can get them all. 
you're able to fit more paste on it, okay? It's looking good. Okay. So this looks good that we want to let it process for five minutes to level number one. During this five minutes, I'm going to mention a few things about the blonde paste for you to know and always ask your customer how they're feeling too or whether everything's going okay wonderful perfect perfect so while that's trying to strip away the color or enlighten it a little bit there's some questions that sorry that I've been um, encountering as I'm doing trade shows uh, that people are asking about the blonde paste because it's becoming more sorry more aware people are becoming more aware of the blonde paste and they have several questions which are uh, good. So a person I had asked me at many trade shows that I work at, how can can you bleach a brow that you've tinted with color and the brow turns too 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 dark for the customer? Can you bleach out the color? Well, I'm not a chemist, so originally I said, yeah, you can do that, why not? But you wouldn't want to do it um, at the same timing. So say the customer, you, you've uh, tinted their, their brows and they're too, too, too dark, you wouldn't want to go right away that same time and bleach them. What happens is the hair is so um, open still from the bleaching, the pigment is going to grasp it, but... The color that you deposited afterwards is going to work with the oxidant and it's going to be even darker. So you're defeating the purpose. You're not actually lightening the, so I don't just make sense. You're not actually making the brows lighter when you're depositing the blonde paste after you've tinted on that same seating. The oxidant will start working with that new color that, that the bleaching that you the bleaching that you put on, the oxidant will work with it and it will work with the color that was already on there and will continue darkening them. So that's why we say do not do that. Wait full 24 hours where the hair follicle has closed so that when you are depositing the bleaching paste the next 24 hours the next day, you're not activating the tint color that's already in there from your previous job. Okay, so be careful with that because you're actually darkening and not lightening. So uh, I, another thing you can do with the blonde paste is do an ombre brow effect. So a makeup artist will have her, her brushes and her powders and she can create a thicker brow. She can do an ombre brow. You can do the same thing with your tint. So if a person came in, their, their brows were dark or whatever level, medium brown, medium dark or, or dark black, you can strip the color for about five minutes then you can take a darker shade of brown to do your middle of your brow to your corner of your brow, deposit the darker brown. Then you mix your lighter brown and do from the beginning of your brow to your center, to the middle of your brow and put the light brown. So you'll have light brown, light brown, and then dark brown. And then when you wipe it off, it gives you that ombre look. So the beginning of the brows will be lighter and then the rest of the brows will be darker, which is a very look that a lot of people do for when they get makeovers, which looks really beautiful it gives a brow nice depth okay so while we're waiting for this she has about two more minutes that we're leaving on the blonde the blonde paste I am going to check it though okay I want to make sure that to see how much it's processing so I'm going to go to the brow that I first started off with and I'm going to slightly lift it and I see already at four minutes she's lightening okay so I can actually take it off because we don't want to go too, 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 too blonde. Then her brows will look not there. We can deposit a color, but our aim was today to just leave them as a softer look so that she can walk out like that and match your hair. So I'm going to wipe it off now. I'm going to take my cotton pad and you can put water right away to remove the bleaching paste. 
So we're going to have a little bit of water, not too much, so saturate it. And I'm going to remove. And if you can remember before her brow, it was a, almost a graphite kind of look, like a charcoalish, not too black, but a medium shade of black. And look already, within three to five minutes, the softer brow that will look good with the, her blonder highlights as she goes blonder, okay? So let's remove the other side as well. I'm gonna wait about 20 more seconds on the other side just to evenly balance it out and we were working on that last. But you can see, if you remember from the beginning, her brows had the darker color as her roots, but she will be probably most likely doing a touch-up job and making her highlights more crisp, more blonde. So now her brows are matching the rest of her hair and not too much of a stark contrast where it will make her look washed out, okay? So I'm going to remove the other side as well. Now, before I get her to leave, your client to leave, you should remove the bleaching paste with your non-oily eye makeup remover. First reason is because you want to uh, give them that lash strengthening, you know, in the hairs and her brows. You just did a processing job. You want to strengthen them still. And second is you don't want to have left any bleaching residue on there, uh, just in case it doesn't keep on processing, okay? So I'm going to remove with non-oily eye makeup remover. And you can go against as well. As we did go against with the paste. Same with this side. Now, if the customer, hers turned out actually pretty good. She was worried that maybe her brows would have a more orange, brassy look. But if your customer has a brassy look, just like when you go get your hair colored, uh, blonde, when you go get blonde highlights or go blonder, even with myself, the hair looks orange at first until they deposit a uh, toner so that they can pull out any of that brassiness. You can do the same thing with your customer's brows. If her brows were too orange for her, I'm not going to let her walk out with orange brows. That contrast will not blend with the rest of her hair. So I can take the graphite, which is our 1.1, which acts like a toner, <clears throat> like an ash toner, excuse me. And I would put that, mix it. I wouldn't use that much. I would maybe put one centimeter. Uh, mix your 15 drops of your cream oxidant or your 10 drops of your liquid. Apply it onto her brows, but under 30 seconds, I would pull it off. Because the thing is, we've processed, we've stripped her hair, we've opened up that follicle. Uh, the color that you're going to deposit is gonna grasp quick like this and we don't want her brows to be dark again. So that's why I say 20 seconds even, test it out, pull it off, put it on, pull it off in 20 seconds, and that should pull away that brassiness without making her brows look too dark, okay? And now to end her treatment, what I will do is apply a conditioning agent. We did process her, um, her hair, so it's our styling gel. Now, if we had deposited a color as well into her brows, uh, this would be perfect to seal in that color and to protect that color. Okay, but now we are conditioning those hairs, okay? We're going to apply that on all the hairs nicely. Oops, sorry about that. And she's gonna get a nice conditioning effect on her brows. Now, if the customer uh, wanted to actually deposit a color into her brows, uh, for example, uh, she had black brows and her hair was brown and we wanted to give her brown brows, now would be where I would deposit the medium brown or the light brown into her into her brows and leave it only for one minute. Uh, as the color will grasp, the, uh, because it's been bleached, strip the hair, the color will grasp in a minute. And if you feel desire it to be a little bit more darker, you can go up to two minutes or three minutes, but anything longer than that will darken it really quickly. So just be careful, but you can go ahead and deposit a new color, a fresh new color for the, for the customer as well. So this is, this is one way you would have used the blonde paste is to lighten the hair so they can just walk out like that, which I can do to myself as well, where I can lighten my brows and just walk out and have a nice uniform look. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little video tutorial, I guess you can call it, uh, to help you to be using uh, blonde brow um, 
with confidence. As for estheticians, it might be a little bit harder to to manipulate um, the blonde brow, but as you get comfortable and learning how to deal with the three um, methods of using blonde brow, you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna be bringing in good revenue and, and uh, uh, add-on services, okay? Thank you so much, have a great day.